Hello and welcome. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can read through these graphs that I have built together for resource allocation. So this is a planning tool. It's not an execution tool. Like you can get the plan or the forecast, but if you're looking for actual hours and the actual resource productivity or utilization, then this may not be the right one. For that, you need to have the actual spend data or actual time that your resources have spent. Then you can plug that in with this data to see how the productivity of your team has been captured. So if you see there are a bunch of graphs and I just wanted to take you through these. So as you see here, we have the first one that is the timeline where you can select the time frame. I'm not selecting any time frame, just leave it as it is. And in these numbers, you can see that uh, this particular thing shows the total available capacity depending on how much capacity you have defined as available capacity for that particular teams. And here is the allocated capacity out of 408 hours. Here I have just allocated 160 hours. And this is the total allocation cost based on the each team's relative cost that you have defined under the employees table. Now coming back to this particular graph here, it shows the resource allocation by teams. That means for each team, what was my available capacity and what is my allocated capacity for that time frame. So in this case, June 2022, you can see team one has 80 hours out of 88 hours already allocated. And for team four, I have out of 320 hours, only 80 hours allocated. So that means I still have a lot of capacity available for team four to be allocated into different projects or different initiatives. Similarly, for this particular chart, you can see that there is a capacity, demand and allocation by skills. So there is a possibility that you have different people with different skill sets and you want to see how much skill is required for each project or activities. In my case, I have put together the demand for each project based on the different skills. So if I have a project that is requiring some kind of development and some kind of analysis or functional analyst or a manager roles, so I can put the demand under the demand project demand roles here. So I can put the project name and description, and then I can add a particular skill set, and then I'll give a start and end date and the weekly hours required during that time frame. So in this case, I have this project. I need this kind of developer for this time frame and 44 hours per week. So this is per week from starting of this time to end of this time. So that way it will give me a good understanding of how much roles are required. So in this particular graph, see that for each project that I have defined, how much is my project need or how many skills I need in order to make sure that I run through my portfolio. So that's what this graph shows. So based on this, you can for sure say that, okay, I need, I have a demand for functional analyst like 742 and I have only 160 available and I need have already allocated 80 of them. So by looking into this, you can see that, okay, I'm in a great need for this kind of skill set. Either I need to hire more people or get some contingent employees to work on it. This one is just a graph to show how many resources are assigned to the project. Now, this particular graph shows the execution status of the project. So if you see that there is a sheet in the master data where you have the project master table, it shows the total number of projects you have defined here and shows whether they are in progress or pipeline or code or completed. You can select whatever status it is. And in the dashboard, you can see a summary that shows, okay, I have in the CapEx projects, I have seven in the pipeline, nine is on hold, 21 is in progress and three I have completed. Similarly, you have projects which are operational expenses or OPEX projects. There you can also separate it out. So you can say that, okay, I have 13 in progress OPEX. Now, moving on to the next graph, which shows the resource over or under utilization. 
So you have different people working on different teams, right? So based on the splinters that you've selected, suppose I've selected team one, then people that falls under team one, it will show their allocation or over or under utilization. So suppose you have a person who have been allocated different projects, then if it is positive number, that means it is still underutilized. So you can allocate this person to different projects or different work. If it is negative, that means this person has been overutilized based on their available capacity. So it's better to take some work pause and pass it on to the other person. So ideally, in ideal situation, if everybody is properly allocated, it should show zero, like almost zero or close to zero. That means you have properly allocated people to different projects. So that's what this graph says. Moving on to the next one, which shows the project allocation by resource names. So here, maybe I may not be selecting the right time frame. So if I select a particular long time frame, let's see what it comes up with. All right, so here, it shows the allocation of the projects. It looks like in this case, there are like for this project, this particular resource num name one and name two, this project is being assigned or allocated to this person. So basically if you have 10 people in the team, it will show 10 different bars for different allocation hours based on the project. So that's how you'll be able to visualize this. Coming on to the next graph, it shows resource demand and allocation by project. So you have a demand based on the project and you have also demand and allocation based on the project. So in that case, again, I'm sure it's missing some data here. What it will show is a particular project has a certain amount of demand and then based on the allocation that you have done to people, it will show how much people are allocated to each project. So that's why it will show you in one shot what is your project demand and what is your project allocation. And it will help you in making that decision of allocating people to individual projects as well. And you can see that, okay, how well your projects are allocated and how good you are in terms of people who will be required to work on that project. So this is a planning tool. Again, as I said before, it's not an execution tool. It's a planning tool that you can use to plan for your resources, use it to visualize and keep on tracking the progress. But yeah, if you have actual project management tool where you are capturing the timesheets and capturing the actual resource hours, I have done something different uh, where there are different types of project management tools. So I cannot put them together here as a way to measure how was your plan and how was your actual. So I believe this is only good for planning purpose. For actual execution, you may need to get the data out of your actual execution software and maybe build in the dashboard to show how you can go ahead and do a comparison. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments and I'll get back to you. Thank you for watching. Thanks for listening. Have a good day.